Let's talk about the seven surprising things that you can do to speed up your ability to burn fat. Now, there are things that you know, and there's things that you may not know that you need to know. So this video is about giving you all the knowledge so you can really overcome the barrier of not being able to not just achieve your weight loss, but to get into and stay into fat burning. It's surprising to me how many people uh, can't seem to get into fat burning or even stay there long enough to see a really good change. And might as well tell you some things to do to speed it up that you may have never heard before. Okay, so now what are we talking about? We're talking about transitioning from where you're at to an ideal situation. Most people are at a situation where they're just running on blood sugars, okay? They're just running on their stored sugar in the liver and up and down, up and down with energy. And they're not tapping into the fat, which that's where all the reserve of energy is. I mean, an average thin person has over 100,000 calories of stored fat in their body. And if you were able to tap into that all the time, uh, boy, your energy would be very, very nice and consistent. So we're going to talk about how to be fat adapted. And we're not just talking about three days of getting your body to start to burn ketones. Okay, that's different than being in full fat adaptation. And unfortunately, it does take some more time. It takes anywhere between one to three months to fully get there. But I'm going to give you some important things to speed it up that actually might be very surprising to you. But before we begin, I think it's important to understand how do we know we are fat adapted, okay? So there are several factors that you need to look at. Number one, you're able to go longer without eating. You're not getting so hungry anymore. Your appetite is disappearing, okay? That's number one. Number two, you no longer have cravings to carbs, which is gonna make it very easy to stick to the program if you don't have cravings. I mean, if you have cravings, uh, I don't know how anyone can stick to any, any plan. Uh, it's, they're, they're, their life's going to be miserable, uh, and the temptation is going to throw them off. And the third factor is, I already mentioned this, energy. Your energy is not going to come up and down, up and down. It's going to be very, very stable and consistent, and you're going to have more energy. Why? Because you're burning fat calories. And a fat calorie has more than double the amount of energy than protein or carbohydrates. So when you tap into fat, you're actually releasing more energy in your body is more efficient. What you have to realize is your body was designed to burn fat, not rely on glucose 24 seven, despite what certain people tell you about the brain needs glucose, etc. Any glucose that your body needs can be easily produced by your body. It's called gluconeogenesis. And that word gluconeogenesis means the new creation of glucose from, from other sources like protein, like fat, like ketones. So this glucose that your brain runs on, which is only a portion of it, by the way, doesn't have to come from consuming glucose. All right, number four, you're gonna have enhanced mental activity. In other words, you're gonna be more focused, you're gonna be more concentrated, you're gonna be more creative, you're gonna be able to get more stuff done. I mean, even your ability to learn will be enhanced. And number four is all about cognitive function, but I should add an additional part of that, which is your mood is going to be elevated. Being fat adapted actually brings you up. You're less depressed, less anxiety, and you're generally feeling much, much better mood-wise. All right, number five, you're going to have more endurance when you exercise. Your ability to generate energy and maintain a certain level of exercise is going to be enhanced when you are fat adapted. If you're not fat adapted and you exercise, guess what you're going to run out of? Glucose really fast because we don't store a lot of glucose. And so when certain people exercise and they hit this wall or they start to get fatigued, that's because they're running out of glucose. But if you've adapted to fat burning, you can go longer. All right. And number six, your sleep actually will be enhanced. In fact, the need for sleep does go down. Not a lot but you'll find that you'll need a little less sleep. All right, that's how we know we're in fat adaptation. There's a lot of different variables that affect your metabolism, your ability to burn fat. But what I wanna know right now, and please put this in the comment section, is which one of the 15 factors do you feel that is the hardest to change? Which one of these factors do you feel that you can't do anything about? That's what I wanna know. 
So let's go through the list. Number one, genetics. Okay, your genes. Number two, your age. All right, number three, your environment. Number four, your food, your diet. Number five, your hormones. Number six, your muscles, your muscle mass. Number seven, exercise. Number eight, your stress level. Number nine, your nutrition. And number 10, your sleep. 11, the timing of when you eat and not eat. 12, the drugs or medication that you are on. 13, the chemicals in the food that you eat. 14, your metabolic rate. And 15, your health reserve. How much extra health or capacity of health you have. Now, out of all of these 15 factors, which one do you feel is the most difficult for you to control? All right, now that you put that in the comment section, that is the area that you need to focus on. And guess what? You have the ability to affect every single one of these items. And whichever one you can't affect is your weakness. But some people will say, well, I can't affect my genes. Well, have you ever heard about something called epigenetics, which is above your genetics? Those are all the things environmentally that you can control. These involve stress level, things that you can do to put yourself in better environments. Epigenetics could involve your state of mind, of just changing your attitude about certain things. It could be about changing your stress level. It's definitely about changing your diet. And so all these factors can greatly uh, help you control your genes and leverage your genes towards improving your survival. Now, what about your age? Can you do anything about that? Well, yes, there are things you can do. There are things you can eat that can help extend your life and decrease the risk of dying and look more youthful and be more youthful on the inside versus all the other things that can accelerate the aging process. And then you have some people that just cannot change their environment too well. And so they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. But the more you can control these factors, the more that you're going to be able to control your ability to not just burn fat, but control your metabolism, your quality of life, and your level of health. So let's run on the list of things that will help you get into fat burning, okay, more on a consistent basis. So number one, exercise, okay? Now, you may already know that high intensity interval training is the best exercise for fat burning, stimulating growth hormone. And you may already know that sprinting is one of the best high intensity interval training type exercises. But of course, for most people, if they have arthritis, if they're getting older, um, they probably shouldn't be sprinting too much. So they would have to do some other type of exercise that involves the concept of high intensity, short duration. But what's more important to know is that the benefit of that is not during the exercise. In fact, during the exercise, you're stressing your body out. The benefit is when you stop, when you recover, okay? And so when I was in practice, I ran into so many people who overtrained and they didn't realize that even for some people, if they're older, three times a week is overtraining. I'll give you an example. Uh, one gentleman came in and uh, he was exercising three days a week and not burning any fat at all. I lowered it to one day a week. That's when he started to finally burn fat. Another lady um, tried to work out every day at the gym over a course of a year. And I think she lost like one, maybe two pounds at the very most. Okay. And all we did was help her sleep, reduce exercise. I think it was at twice a week. And that's when she started to burn fat. So what you might want to try is exercising less. Keep the exercise intensity up and really have a good workout, but only do it once or twice a week. That can make a huge difference. The results are during the recovery, but the recovery is very important. All right, number two, um, taking some apple cider vinegar before bed in a little bit of water. So let's say you took a, I don't know, four to six ounces of water. Um, you, you can do it like an hour before bed and a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Now, why would that help you lose weight? Because acetic acid in the apple cider vinegar is very beneficial to decreasing your liver's ability to make sugar. Okay, so it slows down something called glyconeogenesis. It helps lower your blood sugars. And at the heart of fat burning, it's all about fixing insulin resistance. And apple cider vinegar uh, can greatly help you. I've had many people just add this small little tip to their daily lifestyle, and they started to burn fat. So you might want to try that. 
All right, number three. Um, we all know that sleep is very, very important. In fact, a lot of the fat burning occurs when you're sleeping. And you may have already seen one of my videos when I recommend taking vitamin D3, 10,000 IUs with the K2 and B1 or nutritional yeast before bed because the vitamin D helps reset the circadian waves and vitamin B1 helps the excessive thinking all the time. And you do that with the nutritional yeast. But if you took that before bed, it would enhance your sleep. And you may have seen my other video on a breathing technique of slowing your breath down, especially when you're trying to sleep. And even in general, for stress reduction, breathing through your nose, slowing the breath in can help you fall asleep pretty fast. It can also pull you out of a panic attack. It can also help with anxiety and reduce cortisol. But there's another little tip I want to share with you about sleeping that can help you. The goal is to get a little bit more sleep if you're trying to burn more fat. And so you can try to get an extra half hour or an hour of sleep. But if you have the ability to take a nap during the day and you can do that, that can greatly increase your ability to burn fat. So even if it's a half hour, go ahead and try that. And you might be very surprised that that is the thing that can greatly speed things up for you. Your sleep doesn't necessarily always have to be together at one time frame. Sometimes you, if you don't sleep at night, definitely take a nap. All right, number four, stress. Really, really important topic because stress increases cortisol. Cortisol increases insulin and insulin will stop you from losing weight. So you may already know that long walks in nature are very, very beneficial because it gets you out of your head and you just get space and your stress level goes down. And you may already know that nutritional yeast has B1 and that can help especially nervous tension and anxiety and that can also lower stress. And you may also know if you've seen my other videos that being outside, getting exposure to sun or not even the peak sun, but the sunrise or the sunset, or even being in front of a fireplace or a campfire gives you a type of light called infrared, which increases melatonin even during the day, which is a very powerful antioxidant, which will then also help you sleep at night. It can also help lower your stress. And you may have seen that video. If you haven't, you got to check that one out. But that's not the tip. The tip is this, doing physical work around the house, around your yard, well, especially around the yard, is way more important than doing exercise for lowering stress. So if you have the opportunity to choose between the two, physical exercise or physical work, physical work, hands down, is better because of what it can do to kind of pull you out of this constant problem solving that you have. Physical work is a great activity for shifting your attention off the problems of life and onto something else, like some physical work that you're doing, whether it's fixing something, repairing something, cleaning something, any of those items will help you. All right, number five, staying very, very consistent with your low carbs, okay? Um, <laughs> every week I do a live show. And inevitably, um, people that have great success um, sometimes stall. And it, it, a lot of times it boils down to this one thing. They don't realize that just a little bit of carb or going off the program too frequently, even if it's a little bit of something, uh, can be devastating to the results. A really good test called A1C uh, could be done. Uh, and the reason I like that test is not necessarily to see your risk factors for diabetes, it, it just shows you an average of three months of blood sugars because you can check your blood sugars today and then tonight have a little carb and your blood sugars can be off and then check it in two days and your blood sugars can show a good marker. But A1C will really reveal if you've been cheating or not being consistent because it checks the average of three months, including all those cheat days. So being very consistent and not giving in to even a little bit of carbs can greatly help you. And if you are giving in too frequently, that could be the reason why you're not burning fat. All right, number six, this relates to uh, intermittent fasting, okay? This tip um, can help you 
Um, in the beginning of fasting, I always recommend you consume more fat, especially at the end of the meal. Now, are you going to lose more weight? No, because you're eating a lot of fat and your body's going to have to metabolize that and burn that for energy and burn less of your own fat reserve. But the purpose of eating fat in the beginning of this program is to help you fast longer, to go longer without eating, because that's when a lot of the magic happens, not just with the reduction of calories, not just with all the other benefits of cognitive function and losing weight, but with the benefit of correcting the underlying root problem that you have, which is insulin resistance. So the longer we fast, the less stimulation of insulin that we have. So the better the receptors for insulin can be upgraded and work better and be more receptive. And the faster we're going to get into fat adaptation and the faster we can improve our metabolism. So in the beginning of this program, you add more fat, but as you start becoming more fat adapted and you have these improved indicators, like you're, you can go longer without eating, you have no more cravings, more energy, et cetera, then you start to decrease your fat. Now, I'm not talking about going on a low-fat diet. I'm talking about not adding additional fat. I'm talking about not adding the MCT oil, not adding the big handful of nuts after the meal, I'm talking about not adding the keto desserts like the big fat bombs, because what that's going to do, it's going to force your body to burn more of your fat reserve, which it's already doing, and it's going to be easier because your body is already adapted. So in the beginning of the program, do more fat. And towards the middle of the program, when you fat adapted, one to three months, then reduce your fat. And then when you hit your goal weight, you can add more fat in there to maintain your weight. But I never want you to go low fat. And I definitely uh, never want you to go below 75 grams of fat per day. All right, and number seven, this is interesting. I've noticed in America, at least, when people go to Europe and they don't reduce their calories, they eat more, a lot of times they lose weight. Why is that? Because in certain countries in, in Europe, especially, there's, there's more nutrient-dense foods than America, okay? And so nutrient-dense foods can help improve your health and actually help you lose weight. I know a lot of Europeans that come to America that are not necessarily eating more calories, but they're gaining more weight. In fact, their bodies sometimes become destroyed. So welcome to America, the land of the opposite of nutrient-dense foods. We have foods that are void of nutrition. So when some people recommend you can do dirty keto, I mean, it doesn't matter the quality, just make sure you have those macros. Just realize that that's not the best advice. So consuming the healthy version of the ketogenic diet and the definition of that is adding the quality, the nutrient-dense foods to your plan, I think would be some good advice. All right, so now that you have this additional information, please in the comment section, make note so I can read this of what areas that you need to focus on that you can see that this potentially could work for you. And I think a really important video, if you have not seen it yet, is this one on melatonin. Check it out right now.